this Tchaikovsky concerto is what made Ramel Joseph fall in love with the violin. Born in Haiti, his talent won him a Fulbright scholarship and earned him a master's degree from Juilliard. Music had transformed his life. He wanted to do the same for the children of Haiti. Ramel was on the third floor of a school he built nearly 20 years ago in Port-au-Prince, when suddenly... It was like, boom, 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 and then everything opened. And the next thing I know, I was on the ground. Blind since birth, Ramel tried to find his way out, but was pinned beneath heavy concrete. He remained trapped for 18 hours. He prays that his new wife, seven months pregnant, will be found. He's being treated at Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami, for his two crushed legs and arm. You can feel this right now. You yes. can feel sensation in your yes. fingertips. Yes. So He's optimistic he feelings. will be able to play again. If you had to give me a violin, if I didn't have to fold the fingers, I would be able to play. Ramel's daughter, Victoria, who lives in Miami, is grateful he's alive. Can you imagine your dad not being able to play the violin? No, I can't, but I will love him all the same if he can't. Ramel Joseph doesn't know how many of his 300 students perished in the quake. He wants to go back and rebuild. And like any good teacher, he worries about the boys and girls missing too much school. We can save two children, 10 children, 20, 300, 500 through education and music. And these children may, will, make a, will make a difference. At Broward General Medical Center in Fort Lauderdale, 26-year-old Erin Close struggles to recover. She was working in Haiti as a volunteer caring for orphans and had just come out of the shower when the six-story building she was living in completely collapsed. I got thrown this way onto my back. And had just come out of the shower when the earthquake hit. The six-story building she was living in completely collapsed. Basically all those walls in front of me got were on top of me. And I was buried. She and her good friend and fellow volunteer Molly Hightower, who was trapped below, were able to communicate. Twelve hours later, as Erin was being rescued... I could hear her screaming. I think that meant that the ground below her was getting was suffocating her. That was the last time I heard her. Then they found her body a couple of days later. Her crushed limbs have caused tremendous swelling, but amazingly, she has no broken bones. She's here and she's gonna make a full recovery because she got out quickly and people took care of her. We couldn't have been more grateful. Yeah. And yet, yes. Yeah. Their 24-year-old son, Ryan, who was in Haiti visiting Aaron, died in that very same building. I mean, it must be so hard to kind of Deal with the joy of seeing Aaron and just the terrible grief of losing your son. It, it is, but uh, being here has made us focus on Aaron, which has ultimately helped. That kid was there doing what he wanted to be doing. He was living life, he was uh, making friends, he was working alongside her. And uh, it's an accident. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's like the tsunami, it's like, a, it's like the hurricane, it just happens. Two families changed in an instant, mourning what's been lost, but grateful for what has survived.